This is Philly Drone Tech with Tom Brunt. Thank you to our sponsors, Wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and GetFlywheel.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Philly Drone Tech here on the phillytech.org netcast network. I'm Tom Brunt. Well, I'm a few days uh, late getting this new episode uh, out on the air, but uh, it actually worked out pretty good because I came up with a few uh, new stories that just kind of cropped up that I can talk about uh, concerning the FAA. Uh, so I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, plus, I was kind of glad to see that the, uh, the last episode, which was all about the FAA's new NPRM, Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, uh, got a couple extra days. I uh, hope you had a chance to watch that and uh, kind of soak in all the new proposed rules that uh, the FAA is, is uh, coming up for to allow for a commercial market. Um, that is still available. Uh, whatever you're watching me on, um, phillytech.org, uh, iTunes, uh, YouTube, you can still find all of the uh, previous shows uh, available for download. So if you haven't seen that one, I recommend it because it'll give you a pretty good insight in what the FAA is proposing. So before I talk about the FAA, I'll uh, tell you what's been happening with me. I mentioned in my last episode that uh, my local uh, newspaper for Bucks County, uh, PA, uh, The Intelligencer, uh, came out and uh, wanted to do a story about me based on the new, the new rules. So I'm happy to say that uh, here it is. I finally made the papers. Uh, and uh, it's a, uh, you know, my friends were telling me if I, uh, you know, if I'm not careful playing with these drones that I would make the paper someday. And I did. But in this case, it was a good story. Uh, they also uh, shot a little video segment. Uh, here's a little clip of it that I'm showing you here. And uh, you can see I, uh, I opted for giving them a little uh, taste of the, um, of my little SEMA X5C drone. Uh, Humpty, the, the big uh, Phantom. Uh, wasn't uh, quite ready yet, and plus it was a miserably cold day. I don't think it was even uh, above 20 degrees and windy, so it was not a very good uh, outdoor day for showing them the drone. So we just flew this a little bit in the, in the garage. So uh, very happy for the Intel uh, for considering me. So uh, thank you very much. Um, and speaking of uh, Humpty, uh, I have finished his upgrades. Here he is right here. He's all done. Uh, ready to go. I've uh, done some uh, testing out in the field uh, this past week. That's one reason why I was so busy. I finally had some good weather for him. Uh, unfortunately, my first two flights out were disastrous. Um, very careful when moving everything over to the new, uh, the new um, shell is that a lot of the components need to face a particular direction. Uh, the controller inside has to face the front of the craft. The GPS that's on the top has to face the front of the craft. Uh, it's very important for it to understand its sense of direction. Well, uh, as it turns out, I missed one little component. There's a compass that's on, mounted on one of the legs, and I neglected to put it on the proper leg. I mounted it on the wrong leg on the opposite side, which means basically the compass was facing backwards. So that would explain why when I was first taking it off that it seemed to have no sense of direction. I had a few crashes. Fortunately, nothing uh, substantial, and I, I took to the uh, the forums on Facebook for uh, DJI Phantom and, and talking with people on there, finally giving me my little aha moment. Uh, I put the compass on wrong. So I put the compass on the right way, and uh, now uh, I have a little bit of video here that I took of it in its last flight. It's now up in the air, running stable, and my uh, next test I'm doing is with the full FPV system. and. Uh, it's got a much stronger battery now and the bigger propellers so i'll uh i hope to get like a substantial increase in uh, flight time with uh with the big battery and in an upcoming episode i will actually uh i've documented everything i've done with the upgrade so if you have a phantom and you'd kind of like to see how this works uh, upgrading it uh, you'll uh, check out probably in april i'll have an episode for that so now that i've uh done talking about that, let's uh, talk about some of the stories that I uh, recently came up with with the FAA. Um, one of them is uh, kind of a scary one. Uh, this, this came out of, uh, now I should point out this came from the regional uh, FAA Tampa Bureau, not Washington, D.C. Um, 
but however, there is a, uh, they have asked a, uh, a drone photographer uh, to remove his uh, aerial photography videos from YouTube. Uh, they sent him a letter uh, basically claiming that uh, because they, even though he's a hobbyist, uh, just by the nature of putting it on YouTube, YouTube can monetize uh, any video. Uh, you, you'll see this when you put your videos on there. You may see a, a little ad that's on the video yourself. You've probably seen that a lot. Uh, that's money that YouTube gets. Uh, they just do that. Um, the FAA, in, in what legal experts are claiming is, is quite a stretch, are claiming that, that makes that a commercial product. Therefore, commercial use of drones is prohibited and you are not allowed to put uh, drone videos on YouTube because they can be monetized. Um, that's, that's quite a reach and it's quite a, a slippery slope. Um, you know, here's my thoughts about it. I have like my drone videos up on YouTube. Um, they may or may not have those ads shown on them. I've, I've never noticed. Um, am I seeing anything from those ads? No, but it, it's YouTube. Um, I'm not monetizing them. Um, and, you know, if, if they're going by that route, that opens up a whole nother can of worms, doesn't that kind of implies that uh, every video on YouTube, even if it's a, a two minute video of your cat, uh, is technically a commercial product because YouTube can put ads on it. Um, that's really, that's really stretching. Um, Another part I've read in this uh, in this story that makes a slippery slope is that, um, you know, drone photography is is kind of emerging as as an art form, and I'll I'll, I'll have more proof of that in like a later story on this episode about how it's used as an art form. Now, the government cannot censor artistic expression, so you know to basically say that well this is a commercialized uh, use of a of, of a video when he's not making any money off of it or selling services is you know is is, is another stretch um as i um as as should also be pointed out though uh i have not been able to find out other um things about this story since it is a localized uh, again it's in tampa and it's the tampa regional office uh I've, I've read a couple things that they he may have done some other things uh regarding safety uh maybe flying it in a way that the faa thought was reckless and that might also be playing into it um uh, i don't know but uh in any case it, it uh, a lot of people are, are a little panicky about this you know if this becomes the way i i don't really see that it will again this is the regional office and and even legal experts say it's it's quite a reach to be able to say that and if that's the issue um fine uh, have you heard of vimeo a lot of drone users uh, put their stuff on vimeo they do not monetize so problem solved um, I, I really don't think it's going to be anything to worry about, but it was worth noting. Um, another thing that's worth noting, my second story about the FAA that I just found out about, uh, in Portland, Maine, um, the, again, the regional FAA office in Portland, Maine, uh, contacted a user um, that uh, is basically trying to sell his services. Um, they had ordered him, ordered him to uh, remove his website. Um, he basically wrote back and said they were contacting him by voicemail. Uh, he basically uh, wrote back and said, all right, well, I removed all my prices off of the website. And they said, no, you need to remove your website. Um, in that area, uh, this, you know, there, there are legal experts that are saying that this is also a bit of a, of a stretch of their, um, of their enforcement, uh, which basically the FAA has no enforcement other than for safety. That's it, safety. Uh, if he's not flying recklessly, if he's not endangering the public, that is the extent of their enforcement. They are for safety. Uh, they are not to determine commercial use. Uh, and if we feel it's commercial use, you are ordered to take down your website. Um, a government agency does not have the right or jurisdiction to tell you, take down your website. So 
uh, what this uh, what was done in this situation is that this uh, uh, this this uh, person had uh, posted the uh, voicemail from the local FAA office uh, on a, uh, a a UAS kind of like a legal uh, suggestion uh, form. And after he did that, uh, the, the uh, local FAA office suddenly stopped calling and dropped the whole thing, uh, which kind of says that they they realized that it was a stretch when they investigated it further. There's uh, talk that they that this uh, uh, Portland uh, newspaper uh, had talked to a representative from the FAA and said that they were kind of looking into the investigation about asking them to remove his website. Um, Basically, uh, it, it also kind of shows that the FAA really is the way the rules are now has limited enforcement capabilities. Uh, again, as I said, they are, um, they are for safety enforcement. End of story. That's it. Uh, they cannot tell people. Um, they really don't have the proper enforcement to tell people you cannot commercialize off of this um, or simply uh, take down your video um, of, of a drone flying. Uh, they, they do not have that right. And I, I see if it pursues, though, it'll probably get challenged pretty easily in court. Uh, this goes back to what I call my whack-a-mole, um, uh, my, my whole whack-a-mole scenario, where it's like we're just going to try to sue everybody that's doing it. There's too many thousands of people doing it, and you're you're not going to get everybody. And when you pick, you know, crazy stances like this that are going to be thrown out in court, you're you're not doing very well. Uh, what they really need to do is they've you know they did a good job with their proposed rules, and that could be a very good start to our future of drone technology in this country. Uh, get it done. Let's let's get it done. Uh, unfortunately, until it's done, we are at the current rule set, which isn't really much of a rule set, and you know they're they're still only allowing commercial use based on their uh, individual approval on a case by case basis, and you need a full pilot's license, which with their their new rules, they've basically admitted is is a is a wrong way to go. But here we are still doing it. Um, so time will uh, stand. I'm not really at the panic button yet that I'm going to pull my videos off of YouTube and be worried about uh, this. Um, again, this was like maybe the case of a regional office kind of overstepping bounds a little bit. Um, so we'll we'll see where that goes. Um, so that's the stories I have with the FAA this, uh, this episode. So I'm going to take a quick uh, sponsor break. And when I come back, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of things. Uh, there's an International Drone Day. And there's the New York City Drone Film Festival. Uh, what I was talking before about uh, drones as an art form. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia here at phillytech.org. Flywheel, a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies and helps thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. And by Soho Mail, professional, low-cost email with business class features and security. Okay, welcome back. Well, I uh, alluded to it uh, before the break about uh, some uh, some uh, good stories I have uh, for you for this uh, for this show. Um, let's start with what just happened on March fourteenth. Uh, yes, it was Pi Day, and yes, it was the one time in the century Pi Day where if you follow the right time sequence and date format, um, the first uh, 10 numerals of Pi are revealed in order. Um, but other than that, it was also uh, what's been hailed as International Drone Day. Uh, there's a site that's been promoting this for the last couple of months. Um, there were basically People gathered from all over the world uh, in teams, and would uh, basically it was a day to try to inform and educate the public that uh, drones are good. Uh, not all drones are evil military drones or spy drones. Um, now, unfortunately, I wasn't really able to participate uh, this year, and well, a couple of the fact that it was like raining miserably, so I wasn't even able to fly uh, on uh, International Drone Day. Um, However, looking at this website here, here's, um, I'll, I'll leave some links to this. 
Uh, here's like there's some press from around the world on International Drone Day. Uh, the main site in the United States was in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, however, uh, as I see, there was a, there were teams in New Jersey and Delaware, nothing in Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania, we've, we've got to work on this, the Philly region next year. So uh, hopefully maybe I'll be involved with that uh, for the, the next uh, year's International Drone Day. Um, but anyway, here's, some, uh, here's a feature on uh, South Jersey's um, uh, club that uh, promoted uh, drones um, for the day. So uh, we've got that, we've got that story. That uh, that was very good. Uh, again, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to get involved with it myself this year. And uh, well, of course, the weather didn't work out. Uh, a lot of people were saying while they, you know, came up with this date that uh, perhaps it should be maybe a little later in the year, uh, just because in a lot of parts of the world we're, you know, we're still getting out of winter, so the weather's pretty miserable. So uh, we'll see what they do for. For next year, um, my next story that I have, and and I also alluded to this before the break. I remember how I mentioned about how drones are an emerging art form. Uh, you've seen me post some videos to that nature uh, by uh, band OK Go and and uh, Cirque du Soleil, uh, and how um, how drones are being used as a as a visual art form. Well, um, in New York City, uh, back on March seventh, they um, they held what was uh, hailed as the first um, drone film festival, New York City Drone Film Festival. I so wanted to get into this, but tickets sold out pretty fast. They only had one showing, uh, but it was, uh, judging by the pictures I saw, it was like a, a very small, like red carpet affair. And a lot of very cool videos in all sorts of different categories. Uh, let me, uh, let me uh, find it here. As you can see, here's some of the links here. Um, for the, the winners of the, of, of the show. Uh, there's, I mentioned OK Go, uh, they, uh, they got one. Uh, they called it the X Factor winner. Um, uh, here's one in the category of FPV proximity and technical uh, skills um, uh, from Santa Monica Airlines. Uh, let's see, here's a show reel. Uh, Cine drones are awesome. Uh, there's a, a category for travel and landscape architecture and the one that kind of stole the show uh, is called Superman with a GoPro. Uh, I definitely recommend you see it. It's very technically well done. They used, uh, I think they used a helicopter along with a DJI Phantom and of course a GoPro on Superman's head. A very, very good creative video uh, that was fun to watch. So on my uh, medium.com uh, account, I'll leave a full link to uh, all of these uh, sites. So you can get to uh, watch them yourself. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, next year's competition. And, and my goal is to uh, day one, get a ticket. Um, it, it sounded like it was a great time and just right up, you know, certainly right up my alley. The next video I have for you is right in our backyard here in the Philly region. Um, this uh, company called Bottom Up Photography uh, posted this, uh, this, this great video, started going around the local, uh, the local news sites. Uh, it's uh, basically a drone video of the frozen Delaware River in the New Hope uh, Lambertville region. Very, very nicely well done. Uh, again, I'll leave a link uh, up here for you to see the whole video in all its glory. Uh, I like the music, I like the, uh, the cinematography. Uh, it's very, very nicely well done. And okay, one more story on, uh, this is on the, the fun and quite silly route. Uh, I found this through one of my Facebook friends had uh, posted this. Um, well, it's uh, uh, in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, there's a startup company called Taco Copter. And uh, yes, that is, it's probably what you're thinking. They, uh, they claim they will deliver you a fresh taco via drone. Uh, here's the website here, so if it's on the web, it must be uh, true, right? No, it's a total joke. Uh, basically, what it turned out to be, if you click on the uh, press links, uh, it's, it's kind of an experiment in how to market uh, a company uh, viral-like on, on, uh, on the internet. 
um, it's uh, it doesn't exist and it was basically done as a joke and for this uh, this little little uh, social media experiment but uh, it did have me uh, thinking and dreaming about uh, you know can I do it in the in the Bucks County area here so well uh, here's a picture I uh, I uh, came up with uh, I did figure out the logistics on uh, my phantom on how to uh, mount a taco to it so now the only thing I need is to uh, partner with a restaurant to uh, to make the tacos and uh, you too could have a taco uh, falling from the skies right into your hands so that's all I have for you for this uh, episode and as always uh, I do uh, tweet a lot uh, you can find me at drone guy Tom uh, you can also get a hold of me, and I, I have had some uh, people uh, contact me with questions and suggestions and things like that. So please feel free to do so at um, droneguy at tebweb.com. That's T E B W E B dot com. Uh, also, uh, to let you know that uh, everything uh, that I uh, talk about on this and every episode, uh, you can find the direct links to them on uh, medium.com slash at drone guy tom there's the uh there's a site for you there on the screen so everything i talk about you can you can find uh, pretty uh, uh readily available i had a a, a viewer uh, suggest that to me a couple shows ago and uh, that works out very well thanks for the suggestion um and one more thing uh um, phillytech.org is a member of the uh Patreon uh, network. Uh, basically, what we're asking for is if you enjoy this show and other shows on the phillytech.org uh, website, uh, we'd appreciate uh, your financial support. Uh, help pay the bills, help keep the server fans uh, humming. Um, so uh, there's also be a link to that on my Medium account. And uh, well, thank you very much. Um, so that's all for this episode. And I hope to get the next episode out uh, in a more timely fashion for you. And like I said, next month uh, in April, I will probably be going in depth about my Phantom uh, upgrade that I did. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of hobbyists are doing this if you have a Phantom 1. So if you're interested in that, uh, I'll have pretty full documentation about that uh, coming up in April. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.